What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Uncle Sam's Reject here, and welcome to the channel, boys. And we are back with some more CSU Ram season number six. But you guys could probably tell by the title or not. I'm not sure, but things went a little bit differently than I expected them to go this season. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So you take a look at the season. And as you can tell by the schedule, the last game you guys seen me play was versus Cal, right? Now, what I do, and I have done every single season of this dynasty. You know, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I do for pretty much all my series. I save it, and then I have a backup. You know what I'm saying? And so what I do on this backup is every season, after a certain point, you know, I save the two, and then I'll sim a season, you know, on the backup just to see how, how you know, the seasons stack up, and then I'll compare the two seasons. I mistakenly saved the backup to the main series, and, you know, things happen. We're the number one team in the nation, and we're going to be playing in a natty. So, um... I wanted to see after we beat the hell out of Tulsa and beat the hell out of Cal exactly how good this team was in the backup sim. And as you can see, this is all first verse, all straight sim. We beat every single team straight like this. There wasn't multiple sims or anything like that. And this has this makes me feel good because that meant I built a winner. It just sucks that you guys didn't get to see me win all these games as we make our first appearance in our first ever Natty in school history. My apologies, but but it happens. It is what it is. I literally was doing it up super late, tired, you know, right before I left for out of town to go to the Cowboys Saints game. But take a look at it, man. We beat Utah 45-14. Come over here. We beat Air Force 27-13. Uh, we beat BYU, who wasn't ranked at the time, or they might have been. We blew them out 27-9. They, they only scored field goals the whole entire game. You know, we came over and we beat the hell out of Wyoming. We have yet to lose this rivalry game. We New Mexico took us to overtime. We ended up beating them by three. Then coming down here to TCU, our, one of our arch rivals here in this dynasty, 40-10, to wasn't even close. Shut them out in the second half. You come down here to San Diego State, we escaped from there by three, beat UNLV by one score, beat Maryland by four. Don't have a conference championship game here. We did the sim, everybody lost, perfect timing. We're the only remaining number one team in the nation and here we are in the BCS National Championship game. And take a look at our stats up until this point. Carlos Sainz threw for 3,300 yards, 26 touchdowns, 14 picks. Brandon Kelly, you know what I'm saying, didn't play more than four games this year. So uh, he's eligible to transfer. Be on the lookout to, if he uh, joins the portal or anything like that. But Sands, 55% completion percentage, 16 yards of, of, of completion. 77 was his longest of the year. He was sacked 28 times. We already know our own line needs some work. On the ground, Isaac Whitley ended up being our leading rusher. 225 carries, 802 yards, 3.5 yards of carry, nine touchdowns. Tay Watson was actually injured the whole season. He's still injured right now, coming into this national championship week with a broken ankle. So his glass man status proves to be true as he wasn't able to play his senior year. And we talked him into coming back his senior year. He was all but set up to be a number one, to be a, a first round draft pick after this season. Through the air, DeChanel Mercado, our thousand yard receiver. Uh, so he took over for what Tay Watson usually does. Seven touchdowns, 40, I mean, 6,400 yards, 64 catches, 1,000 yards. So literally 1,000 yards on a dot. Of course, he's going to go over that after this national championship game. Vincent Joseph, 43 catches, 622 yards, six touchdowns. Five touchdowns for McCormick Stevenson. Five touchdowns for Charles Diggins. Three for Whitley, three for Mann. Tay Watson just had the one that you guys seen in the first couple episodes of this season. Blocking-wise, Paul Zeiss led us with 28 pancakes, but he gave up eight sacks as well. Seven sacks given up for Hagler. Seven sacks given up for McGill. Defensively, Levi Mikey led us in tackles with 66. He had seven for loss, 15 for loss for Dan Hilton. Stack leader is going to be Niles Patterson with five. Pick leader is going to be P.T. Henderson and Latrell Lee with four. Um, uh, drop picks, Michael Eubanks with eight. Six for Crooks, six for Latimer. Force fumbles, nobody had more than one. Fumble recoveries, nobody had more than one. Then come over here. Did we get any safeties this year? We did not, but we did have three defensive touchdowns. 
by Levi Mikey, one by P.T. Henderson, and one by Latrell Lee. Coming over here to James True, he was 18 for 22 on field goals this year, 81% completion percentage, true sophomore, first year kicking 98% on the extra points. When it came to 50 plus yards, he was 0 for 1, 4 for 4 between 49. Uh, he was 6 for 9 between, from, uh, was that? From 30 to 39, he was perfect from 17 to 29. In the kick return game, nothing crazy happened. We did have the one touchdown. We ran back with Tay Watson. And in punt return, Tay Watson had a punt return touchdown as well. Take a look at our conference standings. As you guys could assume, we're 12 and 0 total, 8 and 0 in the conference. BYU was right behind us at 7 and 1. We were their one loss. So, yes, we win our fourth consecutive uh conference championship tay watson was up here for the heisman but with his injury of course he's fallen off ryan jameson won the heisman from oklahoma wide receiver from oklahoma take a look at the all americans hunter smith our center was a first team all american come over here to the defensive side of the ball we don't have anybody second team all americans if we had anybody i would be surprised oh uh, we have pt henderson so shout out to our true sophomore pt henderson being a second team all conf i mean second team all american and when it comes to freshman all americans we did have some people play but nobody's going to walk away with an award coming up here to all conference isaac whitley de chanel mercado mccormick stevenson paul aziz hunter smith Kate chase white defensive side of the ball we had Luan rosalind we had pt henderson Second team all conference. We had Carlos Sainz Jr. Tay Watson still made second team all conference. Hagler and Fulton make second team all conference. Niles Patterson, Latrell Lee, Macklin Crook, Michael Eubanks, Devin Latimer, and uh, James True, and Vincent Joseph as a returner. Award winners the Maxwell goes to John Rouse of Oklahoma. Uh, Adam Matthews of UNC wins the Bednarik. The O'Brien goes to John Rouse. The Dope Walker goes to Zach James. Should have been Tay Watson if he didn't get hurt all year. Ryan Jamison wins the best wide receiver. Andrew Jackson from Fresno State wins the Mackey. Best O-Lineman goes to Damian Matthews of UF. Uh, Hunter Smith, our guy, wins the Remington. Let's get it. Uh, Trevor Ross from Florida wins the Lombardi. The best linebacker goes to Adam Matthews. Vincent, Vince Lawson wins the Thorpe PT Henderson was right behind him neck and neck. Uh, he had one more. He had one more pick than PT. He had two forced fumbles, but PT Henderson had three sacks, four picks and a touchdown uh, and more tackles and more tackles for loss. So I feel like that's about that's like small school bias there that we got robbed. And the Groza goes to Devin Austin from, from Memphis. Best punter goes to Derek Moore of the U. Best returner goes to Leon Lawson. I know bowl rankings going into the bowl weeks. It's us taking on Penn State. So we're the one and two. Cal, who we beat earlier in the year, you know, doesn't get the nod for number two. I'm pretty sure they wanted to get another crack at us. Um, but remember, last time we played Penn State, I'm pretty sure they beat the crap out of us, if I'm not mistaken, like a couple seasons ago. Oklahoma's at four. Ohio State's at five. Texas at six. Oklahoma State at seven. Michigan, Cincy, Rutgers, Boise State. So look at Cincy being in the mix. This is like, this is the, the this is technically 2014. You know, what I mean, in, in our world, but the world started in 2009. So since he is like ahead of schedule here from being like, you know, that 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 on the bubble team for being like in a BCS mix, like like they are in real life. But they're not on the bubble in real life they're, they're They should be in the playoff unless they get robbed. You got Rutgers, Boise State, North Carolina, Bama, LSU, West Virginia, Miami, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida State. Uh, Notre Dame, USC, Auburn, BYU, and Oregon State. Now here we are taking a look at the top bowl games. Of course, we're in the BCS National Championship. The Orange Bowl is going to be North Carolina, Texas. Oklahoma Rutgers is going to be in the Fiesta Bowl. Alamo Bowl, Kansas State, Wisconsin. Cotton Bowl, Florida, Oklahoma State. Sugar Bowl, LSU, Cincy. Rose Bowl, Ohio State, and Cal. Gator Bowl, Colorado, and VTech. Uh, Capital One Bowl, Alabama, Michigan. What else is another big bowl? Chick-fil-A Bowl, Auburn, Boston College. Music City Bowl, Georgia, Florida State. You got Oregon State versus Hawaii. West Virginia, Utah should be a pretty good matchup. UCF, Kansas. So, you know, um, these are these, these are like the, you know, the major bowls that once everybody really starts to pay attention to bowls, as long as, you know, their team is in it. You guys missed out on this too, boys. Let's go ahead and take a look at recruiting and what it is we bought into the squad. As you can see, we signed quite a few recruits. We needed to sign a bunch of recruits coming into this year, but we, we went ahead and made it happen. 
take a look at what we need, what we what, what we got left, what we need. Uh, we need a fullback, but who cares? We'll move a, a running back there, and we still need a D tackle. We have seven scholarships remaining going into the offseason. Take a look at top classes. We have a top 10 class. We got five four stars, two three stars, and 11 two stars. Got to get guys for depth purposes. We got a four star receiver, a four star running back, four and two four star free safeties, along with another four star running back. We got a three star receiver, three star D tackle, and everybody else you see on the on the roster is going to be a two star. But we've built our we've built our core and our main uh production and our main uh focal point of this team off of two and three stars and we're in the natty so we know it's possible to build a winner through those rankings and you know those stars don't really mean much once you get on campus and start to play other teams the one guy we still got left that we want to go after is this five-star running back well, I'm, my plan is to go hard for a five-star quarterback in the offseason to try to bring him in. We got like about six weeks to make that happen. But I feel like Derek Richardson should be signing with us as soon as we get to the offseason. So once again, take a look at, um, you know, what we needed. Um, we have four running backs leaving. We have five already committed to the squad. And then we're trying to get a six to come to the squad as well. Look at his interest board. It's, uh, top, we're in his top three. We're number two behind Michigan and Alabama, and we're in front of Alabama. But neither one of those schools has offered the number one running back in the nation to Scotty yet. So I think that's what's going to help propel us past those schools to bring them into the squad. Now we send the rest of the bowls. Let's go ahead and take a look at those bowl results to see how things shook out. We got Rutgers getting blown out by Oklahoma, Texas blown out North Carolina, Wisconsin blown out Kansas State, South Carolina losing to Memphis, Bum SU beating the hell out of Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State, Cincy blowing out LSU. So for all those guys that say these these these, these smaller schools can't beat the SEC teams, boom, that's a lie right there. They beat the mess out of them. Cal blew out o Ohio State. Wow, Michigan beat the heck out of Bama. Virginia Tech beat Colorado. Glad to see our rivals lose and finish under 500. Tennessee won a bowl game versus Iowa. Texas A&M barely beat FIU, but a win is a win. Boston College beats the crap out of Auburn, Georgia, and uh, Bum SU had a pretty close game. Oh, I call somebody Bum SU down here. That was Florida, but they're still bums. Uh, but Bum SU gets beat by 10 to Georgia. O Oregon State beats Hawaii. West Virginia beats the mess out of, out of Utah. USC beats Texas Tech. Kansas, whoa, Kansas beat uh, UCF. Didn't see that coming. UTEP beat the heck out of Kent State. Nevada beat Clemson. So it's a lot of, I mean, Clemson was bad, but it's still Clemson, bro. And they're playing against Nevada. Hey, so yo, our conference, the Mountain West Conference is actually out here putting in work, putting in pain to get dubs. So, you know, you know, the table is pretty much all set for us going into the next episode. I might drop, I'm probably going to drop this today, Sunday, and then the Natty will be Monday. But don't worry, just because we're in the Natty now, even if we win, doesn't mean this series is over. Remember, in the beginning of this series, I said I wanted this to be a perennial power. I wanted us to get, you know, invited to another conference. And I can spoil that a little bit at the end of the season. Whether we win or lose, we do get invited, invited to another conference. I'm not going to tell you what conference we got invited to. But that's going to just be, begin to build the next chapter of what this team is. It sucks, unfortunately, that I didn't get to play a lot of the games this season. But I tell you guys all the time, I'm I'm enamored with the, the team building aspect of all of this. So when I get to build a team and watch them put in work through sim, that lets me know that I put in a top that I put together a top team. And that's even with our 95 overall best player being injured pretty much the whole entire season. The next episode, boys, Kirk and Lee is split. Uh, number one versus number two, CSU versus PSU, man. They got us beat on paper, A pluses across the board. We're B plus, B, B plus. We score more points than them. We got a better offense. We got a better pass offense. We got the number one rest defense, but they do have the number three. And they're number four in the nation in turnover differential. We're number 71. Hopefully we can end the season in positive. We, maybe we can force two turnovers in, in at a dead even zero. And hopefully we don't turn the ball over and hopefully we can come out here to get this win, man. Take a look at their schedule. They only lost was the Ohio State. And we didn't lose to anybody. We ran the goal and ran the table. Will we be able to get the job done? I guess you'll just have to wait and see till next episode. If you enjoyed this one, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. Hey. <laughs> Niggas want me to lose, but I can't. I've been stacking this shit to the ceiling. Know some niggas with bodies and it ain't no properly. We never speak on them killers. Everybody on my block gon' get them some money. It's only a couple of drillers. I've been fucking them hoes, man. Them bitches ain't nobody.